They're some of the most famous and inspiring structures in the world. Buildings that soar high in the sky, bridges that span great distances, and landmarks that dazzle and amaze. Without metals, elements on the periodic table such as iron, aluminum, and copper, none of these structures could exist. One of the things that materials engineers who are designing materials try and do is they try and understand what's the objective. Professor Dan Lewis at Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute in New York is a materials engineer. He works with a wide range of materials, including metals, to build things. Lewis says a materials engineer must first consider the function of what is being built. The objective for a building might be very different than the objective for a bridge, which might even be very different than the objective for an aircraft. All metals have their own unique properties, such as luster, or appearance, electrical conductivity, malleability, how much it can be bent and shaped, and its ductility, how far it can be stretched without breaking. The strength of metal is also crucial to meeting the objectives of a materials engineer. When we stress it, how much damage can that metal take before it finally fails? Another property is susceptibility to oxidation. That's a chemical reaction between the metal and oxygen, which can lead to the weakening of the metal. The oxidation of iron is called rust, and it can have a devastating impact on iron or steel structures. So engineers have to find ways to minimize the formation of rust. For example, every seven years, the Eiffel Tower in Paris has to be coated with as many as 16,000 gallons of paint in order to protect it from rust. But not all metals oxidize the same way. The oxidation of copper causes the formation of green coating on its surface. This can actually protect the metal from further corrosion and even make it look better. Copper roofs or the Statue of Liberty, for example, will over time form what people call a patina, which is just another word for an oxide coating on the surface. When aluminum oxidizes, it forms a protective layer, which prevents further corrosion. It is also strong and lightweight. You can find it in such items as aluminum foil, computer cases, statues, like the statue of Anteros in London's Piccadilly Circus. You'll also find it in buildings, like the top tower of the Empire State Building in New York City. It's very abundant in the Earth's crust, so there's lots of it around. We can cast it, we can shape it, we, we can machine it, and it can be used for just about anything. You know, door handles in its cast form, aircraft parts. Sometimes metals are mixed with other elements to make alloys. Alloys have properties that are different from the individual metals they contain. For example, stainless steel is made by mixing chromium, nickel, and other metals. Strong like steel and able to resist corrosion, it was used to make St. Louis's Gateway Arch and the top of New York City's Chrysler Building. Stainless steel seems like the perfect alloy for a lot of things. But it's difficult to form and carries a high cost. So with all these different options of metals and alloys, materials engineers must match the object of what they're building with the characteristics of the metals they use. It might be that what I'm trying to do is minimize weight and cost. It might be that what I'm trying to do is maximize strength while I'm minimizing cost. And sometimes these objectives are in conflict. It's always a balance. You can't have everything. Now it's your turn to be a materials engineer. Let's say you need to plan and build a skateboard ramp. What are its objectives? Will it be exposed to weather? What metal would you choose to build it, and why? <laughs>